And here we go. Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to another CoronaCast edition. Um, quite a special one for me today because uh, I'm reunited with two very old pals from uh, from Blighty, uh, and we haven't uh, really chatted too much for a few years, on and off. Um, on the left, we have Alex Metcalf. Uh, uh, one of my oldest pals. We we used to play in a band together and write songs together and yeah, tried to we tried to make great music together for quite a few years. You did make great music. Yeah, well, you know, I didn't want to. I, I, I can stick with tried to make great music. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on, uh, on the right is uh, Phil Makatravitz, who, um, despite also being a, a fantastic musician, is these days running a hypnotherapy uh, business from South London. He was uh, the guy who managed to get me to stop smoking in one, in one wave of his wand, which uh, was amazing. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, hi, guys. Welcome to uh, Virtual Berlin. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. Pleasure to be here. Cool. Um, and uh, so what have you been doing for the last couple of weeks. How long has it been um, sort of like a lockdown vibe in uh, in England? Officially last Monday where it went into kind of full lockdown and all the schools shut and we were given orders not to go outdoors but for essential uh, journeys and things. About Ten days ago last Monday. I thought it was Tuesday today but yeah you're right it's Thursday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I I I remember. Yeah, Thursday two weeks ago. Yeah, cancelling cancelling a Bumble date. That was that was the sort of the start of the lockdown for me. What's Bumble? <laughs> but it's like Tinder for people who've been to university. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> I've been trying any uh, dating over Skype. A couple of people I know have been doing that. Um, rent. <laughs> Uh, you know, no, not really, not really, <laughs> not, not, not my bag. It's, it's lovely speaking to you guys, but someone I don't know in this situation, not so much. Yeah, but um, but what have you been uh, what have you been doing to keep yourselves busy and stop yourselves going more mad? Well, I thought it was going to be a beautiful, uh, just uninterrupted stream of creative time, but actually I've been spending so long just adjusting to the fact that I'd known so little about technology and I've got to move with the times. So I've spent basically the last two weeks ordering leads, bits of equipment, trying to work out how it all works. And it's really only yesterday that I got the time to sit and sort of, oh, I've actually got three or four hours to do some proper piano work here. Mm -hmm. So hopefully I'm up and running-ish now and it's, uh, yeah, I'm going to start to realize these ideas for kind of live stream piano concerts and uh, such like amazing yeah i've, I've loved your the sudden uh, uh, boost in your content man like it's um i'll put some links in the thing below but um yeah alex has been i mean it seems like one of them went viral or something like that or a bit viral like how many shares What's the I don't know. Last time I saw it, it was like 270 shares or something, and I thought, okay. Was that the backwards, backwards one? That was no, the it was the nose. Yeah. Oh, the nose one. Oh, the duet. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. that was a bit of a Mr. Chumley Warner, Harry Enfield and Chum's vibe, wasn't it? The old kind of, uh, old imperial kind of uh, <laughs> intro that you did. Imperial well, you know, it's, it's like one of those old-fashioned, you know, old-fashioned like little information videos. The, the intro it was very funny. Uh, yeah, I hadn't really thought of the, uh, the stuff did, but um, that was a party piece I've done for a while, and I uh, just thought, oh, this is a time to kind of give it relevance. But, uh, Perfect. Yeah. Just, uh, just two or three things like that to kind of just test out using video cameras and stuff and backdrops and getting used to it because it's just totally unskilled at such things and I've got a hell of a lot to learn but that's I think one positive a lot of creative people are saying in this time is <clears throat> it's forcing skills totally and depending on how the landscape looks when we come out of this they may well be very useful skills going forward to, did I just say going forward am I yeah yeah 
I must apologise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cliche watch, a pound in the cliche jar, please. <laughs> it's definitely a, a period for blue sky thinking. Is that, was that another, another yeah, classic yeah. I remember? Yeah, and acting stuff. Flying a few things up a flagpole and seeing <laughs> salutes. <laughs> yeah. Um, How about you, Phil? Yeah. I have, I, yeah, I've been super busy actually. Um, so I was again, yeah, I was, I was the same. I was expecting lots of time for creativity. I've got as well as my hypnotherapy practice, as you guys know, I write novels and um, you know make music. So I thought, well, this is going to be a bit of a, a bit of a, a clear run at that. But well, I've, I've, I've yeah, I've lost a lot of clients because people aren't that keen necessarily to do hypnotherapy online, even though it works very well. Um, in fact, we did our session online, uh, notoriously, yeah. and uh, um, notoriously for reasons we'll come to. I think I've, at some I think I've mentioned it um, at least like three times <laughs> on here in the last week. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, so yeah, the dangers of things cutting out, but, um, actually there's a lot of people kind of doing, um, online trainings now because they've got the time to do their online trainings and I coach, um, new, new hypnotherapy students online. So I'm getting quite a lot of work doing that. Um, and then I've been working on a, a self hypnosis MP3, as you, as you know, Robbie, hopefully, um, yeah the mastered version of that coming soon yeah. and so that's going to be available for wider distribution and hopefully people can have a listen to that and you know get some a chance to relax let go of some of the the anxiety of lockdown and, and absorb some more positive suggestions to kind of feel better and more optimistic about things um and then yeah and then you know i've got my little boy so hanging out with him and yeah and doing writing when i can so yeah, it's good. I, I, mean, I love it. I'm basically a hermit anyway, so kind of my life hasn't changed that much. I work from home. Uh, I, I, you know, I don't have to pretend I need to go out every so often. I can just actually sort of embrace my hermit itself, which is quite nice. Your finger pickings uh, on a lot from the uh, videos you've been posting online. Things that was a concerted decision, wasn't it, to uh, to work on? Well, yeah, I mean, I had I started taking guitar lessons in 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 December, having sort of not, um, you know, basically plateaued for about fifteen years, probably on the guitar, you know, more or less, um, and just just coming back to it with a kind of you know beginner's mind and that sort of humility of just okay, well, there's actually loads of stuff that I can't do and making my fingers move in ways that they don't want to move and, and, and sort of starting now to reap the rewards, which is really, really enjoyable and just having a lot of fun doing it. So, nice. Yeah, it's good stuff. And it's, it, this is, you know, we have that time. We have that time now to kind of do that self-development. So, you, you know, it's, there's this opportunity to kind of really reflect and think, well, what are the things I wish I had done? And could I possibly do some of those things now? Yeah, and I think conversely, a lot of people saying, what are the things that I don't need to be doing that I've been doing all my life? Yeah. And this right. a lot of them, except by what most people I, are. Do you think many people are going to start thinking that about commuting? Absolutely. I've spoken to quite a, quite a few people who, who said exactly that, that they much prefer life this way. It's completely pointless, uh, maybe once a week rather than five times a week for some contact time, but uh, everything else can be achieved over Zoom or whatever platforms they have now. Well, yeah, I mean, because the time that people spend commuting is is staggering. So if we say, you know, it's in, in London, typically you might factor an hour each way, right? Just as a sort of basic two hours a day, that's 10 hours a week. I mean, that's 40 hours a month. Yeah. That's, you know, 480 <laughs> hours a year. I mean, that's terrifying when you start to look at those numbers, you know, squashed on a train, you know, sort of kind of dead time. It's quite good for reading or something like that, maybe catching up with a podcast or listening to some music, but you can do that in a comfortable chair, not sort of on a... Be depriving yourself of sleep um, to get up that early as well, which, you know... Right, you're yeah. productive if you're better rested. Um, but, um, yeah, I think... Uh, I've, I've been thinking this for a long time, way before this, uh, this virus broke out, that um, I'm sure... 
people even a lot less office contact time than they actually have. And I'm just wondering if it's sort of bosses feel they need to keep people under their noses to check that they're... But really, I think all you need to do is make make it clear what work needs to be done by the end of the day. And as long as it's done, it's that surely that's... Well, there's been big trends and movements in kind of workplaces towards that sort of more autonomous workforce and it's kind of more target based than you know because people want that flexibility as well when you've, you've got parents and so on um and you know i mean i remember 20 years ago at university they were already talking about the death of geography and all this kind of thing like it's just becoming more and more true and there's so many industries where that's that's possible and but it does need to be balanced with our kind of animal needs for contact and yeah. and and sociability yeah. But, you know, why not do that more on our own terms than this kind of something that was basically decided by some Victorian gentleman in the, you know, in the Industrial Revolution, yeah. <laughs> which well, is well, where our nine to five comes from. You know, it's, 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 it's a lot of things that started in the Industrial Revolution. Um, how's the difference in Berlin? What are the rules of your lockdown? Over there? Um, it's you're, you can go out for an hour a day to exercise um yeah it's i think the same as in england right that uh you can be with one other person at a sensible distance or with your family uh you have to carry your id i still i haven't been stopped by the police yet but apparently they are doing that if they suspect that you're not all, all part of a family um it's household family I oh, think how, sorry, yeah, household here. um I don't know. Well, we went for a pretty long walk today. Well, for a, yeah, I guess for an hour or so, and um, yeah, it's uh, it's hard, especially in Berlin, because it's it already looks so sort of dystopian anyway. In 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 so many ways, it, it's quite it's quite hard not to really feel like we're living in a science fiction film or something. Hmm. Today was just you know pretty classic, like overcast, like cold wind all the shops shut and then there was a few I wanted to take Vincent to get him a Turkish pizza like a Lamachun thing from this amazing place up the road and and I went there and I couldn't and it, it seemed to be open and then I, it took me ages to realize that there's actually now just a little a little slot window thing where you have to buy your food from you know and I, yeah, I mean, yeah it's just and then he said oh no Lamachun at 11 o'clock not yet you know it, it, it all just felt like really kind of uh, oh. Just, I don't know, real or I think we've we've all just been like too spoiled for for so long, you know, and it just can't carry on like that, and uh, unnecessarily spoiled, like, you know. That's pr that's probably behind a lot of people's depression and stuff. Is like, you know, we've got everything that we want. Everything's so kind of. Uh, um, you know, available, like we, you can eat food from all over, I mean, it depends obviously who you are and where you live and everything, but for, for kind of your sort of city dwelling, uh, you know, comfortable, whatever, comfortable enough people, it's... Uh, well, this thought has occurred to me in terms of, you know, the degree of this, you know, the, I mean, my, my neighbours, my upstairs neighbours are in their early 70s and they're saying this is the most remarkable thing they've experienced in their lives, right? Wow. So that's quite a long, uh, long time. Yeah. Um, and yet, you know, when you kind of step back from it, this is the interesting thing. There's plenty of food. There's yeah. all the creature comforts. We're still allowed outside. We're still allowed, you know, imagine this even kind of 10 years ago before all these kind of technologies where actually the remote working wasn't really that possible. The way to, you know, the, 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 the means to stay in contact with, with the people that you care about wasn't really possible. Um, the experience of this would have been far, far different. But as it is now, we're really well sort of... Um, well equipped to, to deal with, with, with a lot of the kind of the, the cost of it, and not the economic, but the kind of the psychic cost of yeah. it. Um, 
It struck me how much choice we have, um, and that choice doesn't actually seem to be that necessary um, when it's restricted. That's one of the things I've noticed, really. So much more limited choice of food, but still plenty to choose from to get your kind of actual vitamins and protein content that you need to survive the day. Yeah. So, and you know, different, 30 different varieties of mobile phones to choose from. We really just need you know, one thing to connect with. The rest of the world, yeah, um, yeah. A lot of the a lot of the things we've lost haven't really made me upset yet. Um, in that respect, I, I think you know, kind of projecting forwards. I think you know the, the social cost of, of of lockdown. I mean, obviously, there's actually my brother wrote a very interesting um, little essay on the kind of the geopolitical ramifications of what's going on, and I think that's going to be a, a kind of a shit show that most people haven't considered all that much but the, the you know the social costs of, of of the isolation and the lockdown will will obviously increase the longer it goes on um you know just on a sort of you know all the level of the organism um so, 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 I mean, we're in the very early days of that. And I think, you know, the people who are struggling, I mean, you think about kind of, you know, I'm very lucky. I've got, you know, a, a, a very nice place. Uh, my son comes over, but I've got it to myself when he's not here, which kind of suits me fine. But then you think about kind of awkward flat share dynamics, for example, yeah. or you think about, you know, the marriages where people are ships in the night and they're kind of there they're together for various reasons of convenience and because breaking up is too hard and all these other situations that become kind of, you know, they get really put under the microscope and you can imagine in those situations, or, you know, people lock down. I mean, I have, you know, people, I know people in Italy and, and one old friend from school, she was locked down in a very small apartment with two young twin boys on her own. And like, you know, and they weren't, they actually weren't even allowed outside for exercise at all for about a month. Yeah. Not at all, which is just kind of a special kind of torture, really. Yeah. I think there's sort of two sources of anxiety, really. There's, there's how to deal with the lockdown and the, what will the world look like after this is all over. Um, how, you know, which is going to depend on how long the situation lasts or how long we need to uh, change things to cope with the virus. Because if it's sort of 18 months impacting the economy like this, it's going to be a, a totally different world that we emerge to. And that's quite scary, for, I think, especially for somebody who's kind of in the luxury industry, which will be uh, you know, first thing to first thing out of the door in the do depression. You, do you consider yourself to be in the luxury industry? Al's a luxury a, a classical item. pianist. <laughs> it's, it's slightly further down the queue than a uh, health work. Uh, put it that way. <laughs> yeah. so, I don't directly involve myself in keeping people alive and healthy and with a roof over their head. But yes, of course, I, think, I do think music's got incredible value in any society, but uh, so it's not the biggest priority in a serious crisis. Can I, can I just it's, say it's out? Never really, it's never really been the biggest priority. You know, it's, it's always been the bottom of the pile in in so many ways, you know? Oh, come on, Nietzsche, that lovely Nietzsche quote, without without music, life would have been a mistake. Yeah, of course. We, we all know this, but in terms of support and in terms of... Yeah, people, you know, who, uh, people who are going to pay me to do music aren't necessarily going to be thinking about that quote. Mm. Yeah. Right. Uh, can I just say, apropos of your T-shirt, Al, like, I, I, I genuinely now miss Brexit. Like, <laughs> Brexit. Yeah, the halcyon days of Brexit when that's all we talked about. I can't really see your T-shirt there, Al. Can, can you... St oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Very good. Well, I have too many predictions about this situation because I know nothing about it, but I do think one thing that might happen is that we get increasingly polarised between people who think the restrictions are too much and uh, to, uh, the government are clamping down and using it as an excuse to take away civil liberties on one hand, and on the other hand, people think that the restrictions are absolutely necessary and anybody who breaks and goes outside is a granny killer. Mm. And I think we'll see a mm. type discussion starting to emerge between one side and the other. So don't worry, Phil, I think you could be in luck. The, the horrible mudslinging <laughs> back 
within the next few weeks. <laughs> I was worried that you can see that kind of sort of curtain twitchy, snarky kind of policing of people's behaviours and, and sort of moaning. And I'm on the so I I live in Crystal Palace in South London, and there's. Uh, a Facebook group, Crystal Palace Local, which is actually, you know, many often very lovely and very supportive and a great resource and 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 lots of good stuff happens there. But you're getting more and more kind of irate posts of, well, you know, this jogger ran past me and you know he, he brushed my elbow and <laughs> people people shouldn't be allowed to jog and kind of, you know, it, it's it's. I think these situations do bring out often the best in us, but also the worst in us. And it's kind of, you do see, yeah, this, I think my brother wrote another article about kind of this, the rise of sort of liberal authoritarianism and how you see kind of the countries that have, have managed to really uh, control the virus. They have sort of more authoritarian collective tendencies. But I mean, you know, the countries like South Korea, um, China and Japan and so on, um, but they also have very you know at, at the heart of their identity they they they're more collective in their identity. So what we view as kind of illiberal, they view as very sort of natural. Um, I don't know if you guys ever read that it was a Malcolm Gladwell book. I think it was I think it was in Outliers, and they, they were looking at the kind of which 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 airlines had the most uh, crashes. And why? And it was always the kind of the, the, uh, the East Asian airlines had the most crashes because if the pilot was making a mistake, because they have such a hierarchical view of authority, then, you know, the pilots have made a mistake, a miscalculation or sort of slightly fallen asleep or lost concentration that's heading into the side of a mountain, then the, then the co-pilot was less likely to intervene. Whereas if it was, say, an American airline where you've got this very individual mentality, the, air, the co-pilot's like, I'm not fucking crashing into this mountain. <laughs> give, yeah. me the, give me the steering wheel, whatever it is. So, so yeah, you have these you know, great advantages to, to, to individualist societies. And I think all of us having grown up in them, we wouldn't particularly want to sacrifice those liberties. But those kind of responses do come easier in certain cultures where that's more more rooted in, in you know in, in a collectivist identity yeah I, I didn't read that book but i did get exactly the same information from a far more intellectual source which was air crash investigations when they <laughs> <laughs> exactly that but, uh, yeah and no, i was just thinking about that very thing with uh, germany robbie because my experiences yeah. of going to germany are that if you jaywalk you'll be told off by a member of the public yeah, yeah. i'd imagine sort of self-policing of this will be a lot more successful i think yeah, the definitely. Brit don't like don't like being told what to do yeah. and they're more likely to flout these regulations but um i think yeah it's sort of uh, I, was, I was listening to a statistician just talk about the, the complexities of trying to unpick why the figures are so different in in each country and, and how but not to underestimate the the behavioral element it could be tiny things that are culturally important in one country, even sort of, you know, the more tactile nature of uh, Italians and Spanish. Yeah. Right, well, yeah, that's, that's a good yeah, point, actually. I'd, yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, I mean, but that's true, isn't it? Every, everyone in Italy and in France, they, 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 they basically touch everybody else that they meet <laughs> almost, you know, every day. It's like... <laughs> unlike unlike Germany, you know, like it's it's like the opposite, really. You know, a handshake at best, and you know, give each other space. And um, you can also you can also see so, so you know the ultimate kind of country of the individual is is America, right? Mm. And you can see why they are as a society. I mean, they've got like the economic might to 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 kind of throw lots of cash at it now that they're getting their shit together finally, but. They are sort of uh, mentally and, and, and socially very poorly equipped. You know, the social net safety net is non-existent. Public health care is, is basically a disaster. And you've got like a, a, a tranche of the population who are just basically nutters who will just say, no one's going to tell me what to do. I'm just going to do what I want to do and, mm -hmm. and I'll do it carrying guns. Well, yeah, so, panic buying 
happens. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was great, wasn't it? The queue, the queue outside the gun shop. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be wiping their asses with AK forty sevens. Also, panic bought all the MacBooks, which I think um, <laughs> really, yeah, <laughs> like a video card. And I uh, just got chatting to the guy, and he said, "Yeah, there was an absolute run on them. They had none left." Um, <laughs> Insane. Why yeah, but, I mean, that, though? Like, why not just lap, not, like, why not PC laptops? Like, oh, I saw you got freed from the cult of Apple, Robbie. Welcome back well, to the I've, world. I've got a Hackintosh. <laughs> I use a Hackintosh anyway. But uh, yeah, I, 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 I think now is the time. That Apple, that doesn't. No more Apple. You know, Apple doesn't work in in what I imagine the new world to look like. You know, it sort of just stands for everything that's wrong with the old world. Uh, Apple doesn't go. Apple doesn't work in a world that's gone pear shaped. No, but like, you know, like, take, taking taking amazing technological achievements and, uh, you know, crippling them into some sort of luxury package, which which basically doesn't allow people to really use the technology to its fullest potential. It doesn't free them to do anything unless it's done in the way that Apple want you to do it. I think that's that's totally. That, that doesn't work anymore. I, I, well, it, 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 you know, if, if there is a, you know, a big recession and even a depression, mm -hmm. then obviously, you know, Apple is always the kind of, it's, it's, it's the more sort of luxury choice as well, isn't it? It's, it, it you, you get a lot more bang for your buck with, with, with a PC or sort of non-Apple product. You're paying for the prestige. There's a slight sort of Vablen aspect to Apple, isn't there? Yeah. I think, well, it never used, it never used, 15 years ago, I mean, Apple computers did a, a really good job for musicians. They had processing power, which was more uh, quality you needed. But I think it's really since uh, Steve Jobs uh, left the board, this has become a kind of style over substance. Um, real people in, exploit them, keep, keep forcing them to get the next uh, operating system and then forcing them to get the next hardware when that sort of, doesn't work with a new operating system and things. It's a massive uh, money. Even, even, even then, kind of, if, you, if you're just doing kind of pound for pound, you know, you know, parity of how much you pay for that processing power, you know, you had more processing power, but you were paying a lot more for it. It wasn't like it was, it was, it was cheaper. It wasn't like you were getting more bang for your buck. No, but I mean, it felt like it was worth it 15 years ago. It felt like you, were, you know, you're getting something that would work better than a PC mm. for recording. Yeah, but uh, I mean, I I just feel that people people are gonna um, people are gonna have to find the confidence to um, fix stuff themselves more and uh, learn how to use stuff better that they already have and. I mean, there's so many um, aspects of modern life which are, which could be done in a different way, which I think people will realise they have to do in a different way. I guess this is coming back to the what you were saying earlier, Al, about ordering all your cables and trying to figure out the technology to be able to live stream and stuff. And it, I mean, the technology is there, but it doesn't particularly work very easily yet. It, it feels very much like it's it's something which was born out of the kind of gamer industry or the, the sort of hacker gamer world. Um, yeah, I mean, the teenage gamers seem to be well ahead of me on um, streaming. They really do some amazing stuff and amazing quality. Yeah. Uh, I guess it's set up for, I mean, Twitch is uh, set up a, primarily as a gamer's platform, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I just, I just love you go, you go on these like YouTube tutorials and stuff, and there's these gamers, and they're obsessed with like streaming at 4K, with like kind of you know f full like WAV quality sound, and like all on one computer, streaming and broadcasting uh, and playing on the same computer, and proudly showing their see-through tower with like you know 64 <laughs> core. Like it's just amazing. It's amazing. Did you see that game of bed? They've they've kind of some Japanese company developed a, a bed for gamers <laughs> and it's just like you know so <laughs> it's 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 possibly the most appalling thing I've ever seen you can all sort of almost smell it from from just through your screen kind of <laughs> gonna snap the sheets <laughs> but yeah it's like a bed and it's got tv and like all the kind of you know 
control panels and speakers built into it so you can just sit there and you, you know like speaking as someone who who works with insomnia for example is one of the things that i treat yeah. you know in terms of sleep hygiene is the, the most appalling bed you can imagine for your <clears throat> kind of your, your your mental health like yeah. really like so bad <laughs> Yeah, and just conceptually as a thing, like no, no, go outside, get some air, go for a run, talk to someone. <laughs> but it, it's interesting right now how all these things that we should be doing, like getting enough sleep and eating properly and vitamin, all that. Stuff, suddenly, when there's when there's hardly any distractions anymore, all of that stuff, it, you, it becomes very obvious how it affects your body. Like, and uh, you know, yeah. Absolutely one of the most noticeable things, I would say, from my experience of the last week and a half. Sorry, I didn't mean to, didn't mean to talk over you. No, no, you didn't. Sure. I'm, I'm happy not to talk. But I just <laughs> um, yeah, just uh, I think getting into a routine and stuff, I sort of just realised how much I overeat when you're passing a cafe and you're going for a coffee and you just, oh, that iced bun looks nice. And just <laughs> times a day and, uh, you know, just got it down to kind of, well, I'm literally eating the same food every day to kind of go a bit extreme with the routine at the moment. But um, Not like you. <laughs> uh, yeah. And, uh, but, uh, feeling a lot healthier for it. I think I might have discovered that I'm gluten intolerant as well because I just happened not to have had any bread or pasta and I've just realised that I'm feeling incredibly healthy and a lot of sort of indigestion stuff that I was having constantly before this disappeared. So good uh, upshot of the pasta panic buying of the people of England. That's pasta bad for you anyway. Well, bad for me. And, and what, what is it um, like when you go to the supermarket in England? Is it, I, I've seen pictures of you have to queue outside and only two people in at once or something like, like that. One one in two meters distance in the queue, so it's quite a process. But uh... yeah, I went yesterday actually to the supermarket, and the, the queue went all the way around the car park. Wow! And like it, it, it's, it's like a mega source. It's a really big car park, but it goes quite quickly actually because you know it's it's. I think it's you know not one in one out, but it's you know you, you, because the queue is so spread out it looks massive but it goes pretty quickly and actually inside because they're staggering inside is it's pretty chilled i mean and then there's certain things that there's not much of uh but you know as i said before there's you know there's there's so much food but you know considering this is the worst crisis in our lifetimes you know things yeah. are kind of okay yeah. <laughs> told me that uh, Britain produces 60% of its own food, which I was really surprised by. I thought I thought we'd kind of really put ourselves in a dangerous situation by not uh, having enough food produced on our island and relying too much on import. But uh, do you know if that, that figure is approximately true? I don't know, but there, you know, there are going to be issues with global supply chains. You know, you know, the, the, the sort of the over, you know, I think the one of the, the sort of things that people are talking about is the kind of the political capital that China is going to get because of you know so much manufacturing has been moved there and so reliant on so many things for them and they're kind of actually providing the global leadership in dealing with this now in it that that, that America you know once would have shown but there's an absolute kind of leadership vacuum there uh, so you know it's, it's, it's interesting to see how that unfolds and. Obviously, it depends on on the length of of, of how long this goes on for, uh, as to, to to where the shortages come. But you know, in terms of staples, in terms of the stuff that we actually need day to day to get by, you know, we're, we're fine. Yeah, that's why I changed my diet to exist on things that can be bought entirely from a garage in the middle of the night. So. <laughs> <laughs> What about your, your Tunbridge Wells survival pack? What was on there again? Your your your, your hipster hipster coping. Uh, That's excellent. Uh, and uh, single origin coffee. So, <laughs> so. Have a great you know, great twenty four hour garage, man. <laughs> I discovered ducks eggs by accident because there's a shortage. <laughs> there's no eggs, but kind of all the duck eggs were untouched, and they're just like normal eggs, but richer and even better. And Actually, do you know, like blue as well. Aren't they? They're a nice color. Lovely coloured, like those marble, like those marble eggs with a slight, especially when you crack them slightly. Yeah. Absolutely beautiful. 
I, I actually have the greatest corner shop, I think, possibly in the world. Uh, in it's by Gypsy Hill Station. Small, but the amount of stuff that they cram in there. It's, small, it's run by these. Yeah, it's run by these Sri Lankan dudes who are really cool. Uh, you know, they, they have. You know, it, I thought of that because they have quail's eggs, right? But I counted <laughs> nine nine types of non dairy milk they have in there. <laughs> In a ever, corner shop? There's a little... Did you ever read the Beano? There's a yeah, I, I was a massive Beano reader back in the day, yeah. My brother so, had the Dandy, I had the Beano. Oh, Beano any day of the week, mate, <laughs> any day of the week. <laughs> oh, man. It's called Store Wars. Do you remember that one? Which is a little... It's a vaguely. Next to a massive supermarket run by a kind of slightly looking <laughs> guy. And... Uh, the, the joke every week was that a customer would go into the massive supermarket and wouldn't be able to find what he wanted. And then he'd go next door into the little tiny store, yeah. which is crap and stuff, and he'd always have this really obscure item. <laughs> it oh, sounds like that place. That's what yeah, I meant. No, it pretty much is. I mean, you can get anything. You can get jump cables. You can get, like, razor blades. You can get little corn on the cob holders. You can <laughs> you li literally... Like anything, the amount of stuff they have in there is just phenomenal. It's it's great. It's like it makes me really happy that shop. So you know, big up, big up the fresh going massive. Should we start <laughs> a new internet series called um, Every Day? I'll challenge you to get an item from. <laughs> <Yeah. Right. laughs> Trying to make me go outside and get the virus as much as possible. Is that, is that your plan? <laughs> just a, yeah, a crafty murder plan. No, no, no. no. Um, um, yeah. So, I mean, and, and what what are your guys' thoughts on the on on the the level of the response? Because we've talked obviously about the kind of the possible authoritarianism <clears throat> that could arise from this. But do you think does it feel like the response is appropriate at the moment? Or I don't I don't know enough to say at all. But I don't trust our government to not exploit it. I'm not saying they are doing yet, but I don't trust them. Um, yeah, to. that's how I feel. It's, it's, such, it's, it, it's such an opportunity that for them not to be trying to kind of, yeah. Well, power gonna, grabs, right? to, well, just for them not to use it as an excuse somehow. I, I don't know. I just, I keep wishing I'd never read those David Icke books, you know. It's just, like, it's just built in, like, okay. Well, it's, it's just happened in Hungary. Hung Victor Orban in Hungary has just passed a, a draconian, he's done a massive draconian power grab on the basis of, of dealing with the coronavirus, given himself all sorts of yeah. just decrees to do basically whatever he wants for as long as he wants. Uh, so that's that's the first, the first one. So Hungary, have a read about oh, that. Man. They say these things always come to the rarely come about by sort of a military coup and then suddenly enforcing a new regime of totalitarianism. It's far more often happens by stealth where the, the, the sort of need is there, the public are clamouring for protection from this. They hand, the hand it over, yeah. Yeah, but they can see that happening uh, very easily if you're not careful. Um, but then how can we be careful if we're already not allowed to sort of congregate and um, sort of discuss the ideas for resisting if that did that were to happen. Well, again, you know, that's where that's where the way we can stay connected online makes a massive difference. You look at the whole Arab Spring and the way that happened. Um, obviously, it's settled back down to some more troubling things anyway. But, you know, we can congregate online and we can share ideas online. But then that whole thing is kind of being corrupted by disinformation and there's a whole shadow aspect to that, isn't there, to, to, to deal with. Uh, yes. Can, can I just quickly jump in with a couple of comments here because you, you guys can't see them? But Lisa, Lisa uh, Thomas is saying, "I'm in Catford and can't believe how clean the air is now. It's like actual countryside air." Anyone else noticed it? And Ben Schilling is saying hi. Hello, Ben. Lovely to hear. Hi, you. Ben. <laughs> um, Sorry, because uh, they, they disappear very fast off the bottom of the screen, and then I, you know, then I forget. So, as as you were. Sorry. So if I get Facebook in another window, can I see yeah. the or will it cause feedback or something? I'm not no, gonna do that. Yeah, I, I'll tell you. So I mean, clean, cleaner. I mean, I, I sort of live near the highest point in London, so it was known as the fresh air suburb when when 
uh, when all the pea super smogs were sitting in the Thames Valley, uh, Crystal Palace was the fresh air suburb. So yeah. uh, I can't say I've noticed a massive difference, um, but then I don't really go outside very much either. <laughs> it feels very different in Berlin, I have to say. But noticeably, I'm kind of used to it now. It just, yeah, it feels very fresh. Um, so it being very young, I'm sure there was kind of this amount of cars on the road in the village that I grew up with, with this few people. I'm sure people just, just didn't drive around as much then or didn't have as many cars. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I drove to the supermarket yesterday at what would have been rush hour. It was yeah. delightful. I mean, there was still, I was actually surprised at the amount of cars there were. But, you know, compared to, to what it would have been, it would have been, you know, it would have been a, a disaster going at that time usually, but it was it was very smooth and quick, so. One of my favourite forms of entertainment at the moment, now there's no sport on, is tuning into the traffic reports and just hearing the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's temporary traffic lights somewhere in Gillingham with three cars queuing at it. <laughs> Real nice sense. You know, um, I'm so used to hearing these reports, and I think it's a nightmare. People are stuck for ages. They're going to be stuck on the M25 for two hours, and sort of empathising with them. I think, our oh, poor chaps. Just, just hearing these kind of nice, pleasant traffic stories for a change. <laughs> <laughs> Do you My, remember that the, there was a bit of an online phenomenon? I think like a year or two ago, where there was this like massive puddle somewhere right in front of a CCTV camera. <laughs> And you could just tune into that CCTV camera just to work, watch people work out how they were going to get around this massive puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> Very entertaining. Well, uh, we, we, maybe we should just go back to we were talking about, um, yeah, the authoritarianism and uh, that being this being used as an excuse by governments and that sort of thing. That was just before I read the comments, but. Um, I, I am I am really interested in how we we keep on talking about uh, you know people are going to need to change their needs and or, or you know realize that their needs can be different etc cetera, etc cetera. but I just wonder when does that start happening you know like when do we do we all just sit around waiting for this to be kind of over and then say okay right now we're going to uh, we're going to pick up where we left off, but in a different way. Or shouldn't we be doing it now? Shouldn't we be already now, like rebuilding us or rearranging our, our well, outlook? And when the being so staying still feels very much like going backwards. Mm. Not another I, I, cliche. Um, I, I, I think you know we're in such an early point of this that I think you know thinking too hard about that doesn't really necessarily I wouldn't it's not not what I the route I'd go down at this point I think it's time for just people to reflect mm. and introspect and 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 just rather than making any sort of grand assertions about what the future is going to look like and, and, and what they're going to do is perhaps just build up that level of self self-awareness like we've been talking about okay what do I need what's extraneous um, and, you know, from a kind of neurological perspective, you know, the, the neural pathways, you obviously build, build neural path, new neural pathways, we, we develop new habits, but, you know, the same re for the same reason that alcoholics are always in recovery, you know, those old neural pathways are still there. And while we habituate very easily, we also kind of rehabituate to those old patterns, those old routines. So at, at this point, it seems quite a big leap to start saying well we you know everything's going to be completely different i think there's going to be a massive desire for for people to go you know it's, it's a bit like when there was the great fire great fire of london right uh, uh everything burnt down and so christopher wren created a, a beautiful new design kind of based on paris yeah. lots of amazing boulevards yeah. and all these things but every everyone wanted their old little patch of land back so that's why london got rebuilt as this kind of mazy little place that it that it was before yeah. so so i wouldn't necessarily assume that, you know everyone's had talking about big revolutions and everything i mean we'll see we'll see i think they come about out of necessity and it depends on kind of how the economy looks and and how dissatisfied 
people actually are to to see how much things will, will change. I'm sure they will change to an extent, but I think it's more likely to be things like we were talking about before, like how much do I really need to be in this office today and how much can I get done at home and how flexible and adaptable can I be yeah. about the way that I do things. Um, and that might lead to different changes as well because that's just a more humane way of going about things. If it's three months, I think it'll be very little will change. Even, even people's solutions that they they realise these things that they don't need to make so many car journeys within two days. I think be back. To what they used to. Uh, if it's three months, say, of a totally stagnating economy, I think that will change the picture. Just because there'll be so more people out, so many more people out of work, and we'll have to find new ways of looking after people who don't have an income. So that will sort of force some shifts. It depends how, how we choose to view those people, um, which I may be one of. Do we go to kind of the, the universal basic yeah, income, well. income route? Everybody needs to be provided for, everyone needs a minimum food roof over their head. Or do we say anybody who's not earning money and contributing to the economy is not valued at all and won't have any health care and, well, just throw them to the dogs? Well, I mean, there's certain things which, like I, I read this morning, that um, for the first time uh, ever uh, in Berlin, they've actually made like a, a, host, a proper hostel for homeless people. So they're, they're basically getting all the homeless people off the streets now, like make, you know, making sure there's no one sleeping rough. And how can how how can how can how can things move back from there to how they used to be? You know, how can okay, the crisis is over. Sorry, you're all out back on the streets again. You know that. There's certain things which, again, like going, like, like I, I said this, I think, on one of the first episodes, another article I read about, you know, um, all the restrictions, all the travelling restrictions, like, you know, the 100 millilitre limit on liquids on the plane, and that's suddenly gone because you can uh, now take hand sanitizer on, and like, all, all of these... Th oh, that was always so dumb, wasn't it? It was one shoe, one shoe bomber, yeah. and suddenly... You know, one one like crappy, ineffective shoe bomber who didn't even do anything, yeah. <laughs> and then suddenly everyone's got to take off their shoes on every plane yeah. around the whole world. It's it's. So I think there's you know. there's a lot of things which are going to be uh, exposed as we're always wrong, and we can't go back there. And I haven't given enough thought about, about the whole list of them, but um, yeah, uh, what was my point? Uh, yeah. Exposing hypocrisy is yeah. essentially. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely reasonable reason to be hopeful that the lessons that we've learned will be continue to be applied and maintained. So, uh, Lisa we'll is see. saying she thinks business owners will realise they don't necessarily need the overheads of their office spaces. Yeah, I mean that's a huge fixed cost you can get rid of, for, for, especially for smaller to medium-sized businesses. You know, why the hell not? When yeah, I fully agree. And especially they, you know you can you can hire like once a week. You might have like you know like you got hot desking and all that kind of yeah. thing. You can have you can hire conference rooms. You might have you know a, 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 some office space that you hire one day a week to get everyone, or a couple of days a week to get everyone together, and then the rest of it is remote working rather than paying for all of that space all the time. They may also realise that the people who are sort of be, being temporarily laid off aren't necessary and they can get by with a smaller workforce. So, you know, yeah. In it does sort of feel a bit oh. like the universal basic income thing might be... Might be yeah, I, saw, I saw like a kind of sci-fi thing at some point recently. Uh, just get the idea that... People in the city might just be, uh, you know, you have to basically subscribe to this lifestyle. You get you get some money and you have to do 10 hours work a week. Everything else is automated. You have to do this little contribution and in, in exchange you get a nice apartment with everything you need, food, blah, 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 nice clean parks, an electric vehicle that you share with, Ten other people, or so, whatever it is, you know, you, you just get this subscription type mm. life, and then everyone else is out in the countryside, kind of Mad Max style, like building their own, like, you know, water filtration plant, 
uh, off-grid kind of thing, and that's basically it. And I don't know. I'd be happy being out in the countryside, personally. Well, I, I, we, we should be. We should have been addressing for a long time anyway, because there there are fewer jobs. There are more jobs being automated. The population's going up. And the amount of stuff that people can physically do for money is going to go down as mm. robot computer programs do it all for us. So we've got to work out what people can do or how people can be provided for if they don't have a means of income. Yeah. So maybe push that debate ahead. I mean, yeah, I, I think that, that's a really excellent point. It's the kind of it could be the thing that just kind of galvanizes this 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 process that we're sort of long overdue starting on, anyway, um, and also sort of seeing the the degree of work that's actually required. You know, I mean, years ago, Bertrand Russell wrote about Homo ludens and you know the man of play because you know the idea was to cut down the amount of time that we actually work, and then we have we we, we spend our time doing things, you know, more meaningful things to us. And so if our work is meaningful, then we can carry on with that. Or if not, then we can pursue the things that bring us joy and pleasure because actually a lot of the drudgery is being is being robotized and automated. Um, but that's, you know, that's where, you know, piano teachers will be in, in, in massive demand and uh, piano performers and content makers and maestros. And also, if it is a massive Illuminati conspiracy, the Illuminati do like classical music, so um, <laughs> I think I'll be one of those uh, you know, Mozart types with a uh, wealthy patron. Uh, <laughs> oh, if we're going to go down the conspiracy route as well, so my my, my theory, when this when this started coming out, I, I say my theory is it's, it's I, I don't subscribe to this, but there's a certain sort of intuitively pleasing element to it. You have this increasingly sort of polarized society, you know, this, 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 the, the culture war as it were. Um, and we've got all these, these, these gaps that we can't bridge. And so what better way to bring people together than introduce, and th there wasn't a viable external enemy um, that we can that can bring us together. So you know there isn't sort of a, a particularly viable cold war that we can go on or anything like that. The, we haven't found the aliens yet, the threatening aliens. So what better thing to bring us together than this virus that's you know is dangerous enough that we have to lock down, but not so dangerous that it's going to sort of destroy the Earth's population. Um, but you know people have to come together and work together and 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 and, and realize that we're we're all in the same boat um so you know that's that's a very way of looking at theory i would say <laughs> if i was the sort of secret uh, underground <laughs> ruler of the world um uh, i would sort of say this is a perfect virus to bioengineer so that it doesn't kind of wipe well it wipes out a lot of old people which are you know, they're not contributing anything to society they're burden on the pension schemes and it gives the the perfect amount of uh, strain on the health service to force everyone to stay indoors and then implement these kind of ideas that um, it's socially responsible to stay indoors and uh, so it gets the rest of society to paint anybody who breaks the rules as uh, as somebody who's spreading the virus and eventually force people to uh, share their location so that they are, they, you know, they're not going out of doors when they shouldn't be and things like that. All the things that if I was an Illuminati sinister person, I would want to implement. But I like to try and come up with the most... Uh, <laughs> it's everything you've said well, is exactly what I've been thinking. Uh, what well, Ike been thinking? As <laughs> <laughs> about this, I, I like to challenge myself to come up with the most far-fetched conspiracy theory and then see if it comes true. So that's a good game. Is it a given in the conspiracy world that Hollywood is totally bought by uh, by the Illuminati and they they have a control over the outputs and what sort of? Well, you know, my 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 ex, as you know, J Jamie, as you guys both know well, very into that world. And you know, you couldn't watch uh, the highlights of a Super Bowl halftime show without her pointing out all the hiding in plain sight Illuminati imagery and all of it. You know, you, you can literally there's there's nothing that you can watch that comes out of America that you can't sort of superimpose these these conspiracies on one way or another. 
Well, how about this one then? The the Oscar panel ensured that Parasite would win the Oscar. <laughs> And knowing the virus had been bioengineered and was ready to be released, just to sort of condition people to this idea of being stuck indoors and just sort of sow the seed. Is that, is that a tangible, is that sort of thing a conspiracy? Theory? Well, you know, Korea did deal, deal with the virus very well. And so why is that? They won, the, in the year that they won the Oscar, they also dealt with the virus incredibly well. What do they know? What, what, what are they building in there? We have a right to know. <laughs> Can't possibly be a coincidence. I think that's, that's proved that. No, clear, I mean, that much is clear. I mean, we can all agree on that, and everyone watching can clearly agree on that. I mean, if there's one take, one take home from that, so we've got to keep our eye on South Korea here. This is this is turning into a very different kind of podcast. All of a sudden, I'm sure. I, I, mean, I haven't, I haven't checked. Out. Ben, I think Ben Schilling. I think maybe he just caught a little bit. He's saying, "Are you serious about old people? Time for compassion." <laughs> I think, he, I think maybe he missed the beginning of that little chunk. Um, yeah, massive caveat to all of this. We, yeah, none of it is yeah, true. But I could imagine that I haven't done any research because uh, I'm terrified of messing up my fa uh, my um, YouTube algorithm. But I, I bet I bet I, I bet you there must be the most crazy conspiracy podcasts going on right now. This this must be like heaven for those guys. Oh, literally, yeah. I've heard Big a lot of 5G-based ones. You've been oh, hearing oh, those? Sorry? I've been hearing a lot of 5G-based ones, and it's all a conspiracy to get 5G erected whilst society shut down, which seems to be... <laughs> Why? Why would well, yeah, I, 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 saw, so, no, I I saw a map, right, and it was like, okay, these are the virus hotspots yeah, I saw that. in Spain, and these yeah. are the 5G hotspots. Da, da, Oh my God! They're also all the cities. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Lisa was saying there, are, has a lot there are lots of cyber security issues during this crisis, as hackers, especially social engineering hackers, are taking advantage of increased paranoia. Yeah. Yeah. Virus profiteers. It's always going to be. Uh... Well, Zoom. Zoom's come under scrutiny as well, hasn't what, it? What has? Zoom. Zoom, the, the, yeah, I, Zoom is an app. Yeah. Um, I wish I bought shares in Zoom, man. Can you imagine? Like, if you were, if you were Biff in, in Back to the Future, <laughs> you definitely, you know, who needs an almanac? You just need to kind of, yeah, buy, buy shares in Zoom a couple of months ago. Yeah. And probably sold a few days ago before the scrutiny started. <laughs> the scrutiny, what, what are they saying? Oh, I, I mean, I, I didn't dive too deep into it, but apparently, they, you know, they've, they've, they've exploded in the popularity and apparently some of the, their security protocols might not be okay. up to scratch. So, yeah, all of that, I mean, that, that's, that's a pretty specialist subject that I can't pretend to know anything about. Well, one thing I read that you can, you can hack into a, a meeting quite easily if you're a good sort of... I was, I was advised to use Zoom for my teaching because it's supposedly the most secure platform. I was told, don't. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, I suppose, yeah, I mean, for me, that would have issues around client confidentiality. Um, okay, yeah, I hadn't really thought about the, the kind of closed, the closed thing, yeah. But, I mean, you know. There's a lot of data, it's, it's, it seems... a lot of data flying around, isn't it? Like, there must be pretty wide, wide channels. Yeah, I mean, you'd think, you, you, you know, if you, obviously I have issues around client confidentiality, but I don't think, you know, I have any particular VIP clients or there's any kind of really sort of anything of much use for a hacker to, to, to hack into. They're welcome to hack into the hypnosis parts and get nice and relaxed before they go and screw some massive corporation and, and go for it. Maybe you need to start each consultation with a little segment just for the hackers that might be listening, where you, where you, you put <laughs> yeah. them into a deep sleep and get them to decide yeah. to stop hacking people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just some, just some anti-hacker suggestions yeah. at the start of each hypnosis. Yeah, no, that's, I, can, I, can, I can work that in. Oh, ben Seems. is saying Zoom, <laughs> Zoom was sharing personal info with Facebook, even people who didn't have an account. Ah. There you go. Huh? Always Facebook involved in this data harvesting. Who owns Zoom? Is it owned by someone else? Let's have a look. No. 
I know that Twitch is Twitch is owned by Amazon, unfortunately. It's, 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 Zoom, it's Zoom anything, also, is it anything to do with the kind of the microphone company Zoom? Or the... No, not at all. So. Robbie, do you ever watch the Joe Rogan podcast? Uh, I know what it is, but. Um, it's got like a fact checker in the background on the computer doing all this stuff, so maybe you could get Vincent to do that. <laughs> but he's not allowed. Twitch, Twitch, it doesn't have to be on screen. Twitch, oh yeah, that's true. He doesn't have to be on screen. Just, just dress him like a Victorian urchin. I could get him to wear. And, and he, could wear the pig, <laughs> he could wear my pig mask that I've got, so he wouldn't see his face. Yeah. That's really freaky. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to getting into sort of weird Max Mad, Mad Max outfit territory. It'd be amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need a pig. You create a character for him, Pig Child. <laughs> yeah, child. Pig Child. Fact check. Robot and Pig Child. It's got more. Of a... <laughs> uh, Lisa was saying uh, her partner works in IT and won't let her get Zoom because it's not end-to-end -end encrypted, and they steal all your data. You ask, what is, what, what, what's, sorry? Liesl, can you, what, can you tell us what we should use instead? Yeah, well, let's give her a second. Liesl, why aren't you on this podcast? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we're going to have plenty of time to get around to everyone. Let's see, it's uh, video communication, Zoom video communications. Let's have a look here. Um, found a... It's valued at sixteen billion dollars. Can you find out what its value was a month ago? From that, does it have a sort of yeah history? a year a year tracker or a month? Yeah, do, do the the year graph. With the uh, uh, I don't have enough time to read all of this. Um, Just do Zoom share price. It should be a graph, right? You do it. I'm doing it now. It's a portfolio. It's one With year. Video All right. So, so yeah, a year ago it was worth sixty billion. Sixty. Oh no, hang on. No, I'm actually I'm looking at the sh the share price. The share price a year ago was sixty sixty dollars, and actually today it's one hundred and thirty seven dollars. So it's it's doubled. Uh, and in fact, no, you can see actually in in on the twenty seventh in. On the tenth of December, it was sixty-four dollars, and then it peaked on twenty-third of March at one hundred and fifty-nine dollars. Oh, yeah. So it did go up Just yeah, a lot. Mm. Anyway, uh, that ends the financial news. <laughs> We should do a yeah, spin-off podcast, which is just us three talking about the stock market. Yeah, share prices. <laughs> But we do it in musical form. Uh, well, this is—I—I I, I think maybe today is going to be the day I finally uh, look look into this um, like latency-free or super low latency online jamming platform type, whatever that is, because there's a few people that I have projects to do with. That if we could get that working, then we could basically carry on, you know. Um, it actually exists, does it? Like, apparent, it apparently. Stuff. I was uh, trying to work sorry, out. Sorry, Lisa, Lisa was saying for one on one conversation, you can use Signal, one of the most secure, apparently. Okay, I'll check that out for my clients. Great, another new platform to learn. <laughs> sorry, Al, uh, you were saying. Um, I can't remember the, what I was saying, but, uh, yeah, I, thing. but I just I had another thought before that about Phil's idea for the musical formed uh, share index podcast, in which I just play the theremin and I can just <laughs> illustrate the shit. Oh, there we go. There we go. And uh, you yeah. think he gets some kind of link that up to some kind of you know graphics program that responds to your your theremin, and you can draw the graph with the theremin. You could do that in Max MSP, no problem. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Go on extra. Start next week. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm I'm I'll, I'm all in. <laughs> I'll do the lyrics. I was sort of thinking I was going to have to sort of rework duet, so to, by kind of working out what the exact delay was in milliseconds, <laughs> and then learning get one person to learn to play just behind the beat <laughs> or one behind in that time. I was kind of looking forward to that challenge, but now you're telling me that actually maybe no latency streaming software out there. But it would, wouldn't. It, I mean, then what about those that, those ligaty pieces you were showing me, where the bar lines shift? 
between the right and left hand. Wasn't, wasn't, was it Ligeti? I can't remember. Oh, that gives me a headache just thinking about it. So, <laughs> I was thinking about starting with something like Old MacDonald Had a Farm rather than doing, the, uh, doing any sort of Ligeti chamber yeah. music. <laughs> but, but, but some of those things would Principle. some of those things would work pretty well even with the latency, right? Um, yeah, uh, I was uh, thinking of doing um, some Steve Reich uh, clapping music and piano phase, first of all, because it's sort of quite regularly repeating stuff and you should be able to fathom where to play. Yeah. It'll be horrific to you, but it sh should be doable and the, the end result is very easy. <laughs> but it all depends. If, if there's no latency stuff, I won't need to bother, so uh, I'm more keen to find out about that. Yeah. Well, there's one called Jammer, apparently, and one called Sofa Session. Uh, I had a look at Sofa Session, and it, it said, yeah, uh, we, um, we're desperately crowdfunding because our servers are like in meltdown um, right now. So, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, yeah, but I, th I, I can't quite get my head around how it could be possible. Uh, I think definitely um, you'd need an Ethernet connection. But it wouldn't work over Wi-Fi. Which actually, I'm amazed that because I have a big sticker on the top of my laptop here saying "Turn Wi-Fi off when I when you stream" because it never works. And like five minutes ago, I just noticed, oh, we've we've been streaming over Wi-Fi the whole time, and it's been okay. I think um, your connection to me looks very good. So, are you, are you, are you using any kind of uh, what's it called audio source or anything kind of high high? Um, with those um, Source Connect, things that can stream in uh, 512K sound. What, my, 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 my audio sounds good or my picture sound, looks good? Both, actually. But, um, well, yes, the audio, the audio I've got, a, like a pretty pricey Sennheiser um, lav mic. Um, like it's, it's a wireless one that I use for when I'm doing my you know, live stream playing when I'm walking around the studio. So that that's probably what, if the audio sounds better, that's probably why. But yeah, the, the camera is just uh, just on my laptop. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, sort of being educated in as I thought. The Wi-Fi connection is by far the biggest, the most important factor, rather than the quality of the microphone and the quality of the the, uh, the camera. So I mean, I you, you just, 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 that, just need, I mean, I think for streaming you need Ethernet. Like it's, I mean, this is actually working on Wi-Fi, but it's I think I've just maybe been lucky or something because I, I, I did forget a couple of times and it, it just doesn't work I, I think um, especially if you want latency to not be too much of an issue then it just puts a lot less strain on the computer I think if, if you use an Ethernet connection but because Apple did away with all the Ethernet ports on laptops I now have to have a USB 3 hub with Ethernet on it so it's actually over USB 3 it's just like, oh shit, man! Can't wait to get my PC when this finally snuffs it. So the definition of a hacking tosh is a PC body but running Linux or running, running OS, X. OS X. So that's my studio computer. Is I, I built it like what was it? Yeah, three years ago or something. Had some help in the end. I couldn't get it fully working, but um, it wasn't too bad. It cost me about a grand for everything, and it's like 4.3 gigahertz with 32 gigs of RAM, and it's like it's super fast and amazing. And it's just a big box that you can put stuff in, unlike all the Mac stuff. You know, that was always the pain in the ass with Macs. Now is that you can't. I've got like four hard drives in it and stuff, and it's just great. Um, that it, not everything works on it. It doesn't switch off. <laughs> So I have to time it, I have to shut it down and then I have to flip the switch on the wall to switch it off, which is a bit annoying, but I'm used to it now. Um, some of the USB ports don't work. It's got four monitor outputs, but only two of them work. There's just things that don't work, but you can, you can kind of keep on fiddling and get it working, but it is, it's getting into that kind of deep nerd territory, which is terrifying, but yeah. which I do feel like if more people you know, if th if that was if that was what computers meant to people, instead of this kind of home computer thing, which w was very cool at the time, you know, like Steve Jobs and all, you know all those Bill Gates, like all those guys that kind of wanted to get computers into people's homes, 
fine. They made a lot of money, all good, but they also kind of took away quite a lot of the skills that people need to be able to actually get the most out of this technology. And it, it, yeah, but I, but come on, I mean, like you know, everybody needs a computer these days, and not everybody has the time or the inclination to kind of master that kind of but, level yeah, but not, of not master it, but but have a have a different kind of relationship with it, not just expect it to be this thing that magically just does these tasks and and if it goes wrong then you're you're stuffed you know like yeah I, to, to be honest with you, I'm, I'm kind of in that boat because i i about four years ago i've got a really pretty like all-in-one ace it's the asus zen you know it's the all-in-one pc it's very fast and everything but you literally you can't and it's got a massive screen which is touch screen very high res very lovely but you can't open it and when things you know there's, there's an issue with the fan now and like you, you actually have to send it to a factory to open it because all the, the screen is glued onto the carcass yeah. and then uh, and, and all the computer stuff is in there so it, it really is kind of I, I, I very much regret yeah. getting it even though I still like to look yeah. at it because it's pretty I mean, when uh, when I have a bit more money, I'm going to build a, a dedicated streaming PC because at the moment I just have my laptop here, which the fans go crazy when I'm streaming for some reason. And I, I just want to have something which just does this one thing and it'll be a PC and it'll have nice, fast Ethernet card in it and, uh, you know, all good. I have to say, like... I, I a few months ago, I bought this kind of as an impulse. It's this microphone I'm using. It's a, it's a USB mic. And for 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 someone like me who you know, like I, I used to have Pro Tools, got rid of it because I just can't make it work. I, I I don't get on the digital audio workstations and everything. But this, it's got like a little compressor and different modes built and little EQ built into it. And you can plug you plug it into your phone and actually do like quite decent recording. So I can have it in my computer now. And kind of, you know, it's much, much better than the computer microphone. Yeah. I can use it for online hypnosis sessions. It's it's just like a group. It's like a, a really groovy little thing to have that, you know, again, a few years ago, this stuff would have been a lot more complicated and a lot more difficult. Like, again, for me, you know, with my hypnosis, because I record the hypnosis sessions that I do with people. And, you know, I have, yeah, a little Rode lav mic that I plug into my phone. And then I have an app that records it and sends the recording straight to my Google Drive. And then I can literally just send the link to my client and they've got the recording session right there. So actually, even Luddites like me can streamline their processes. But the problem is when things go wrong, we have no idea how, how, how to fix them, how yeah. they work. Basically, yeah, just leaves in the wind. I feel like we're kind of... Uh septuagenarians in the 90s going i've got this thing you can you can record off the tv just put this uh, put this big thing in it <laughs> <laughs> video plus do you remember video you get the little video plus code you know, so you could record it would record when you weren't there which was like a massive thing so i don't think anyone, anyone ever really used it but maybe they did i don't know but it seemed exciting it seemed like the future didn't have that. I, I mean, we. I remember we had. Uh, eventually, we got Sky TV in one room, in the house. Is that what it was? Was it like that? Was it part of Sky or something? No, no. It was. It was a kind of thing. Just it became standard in sort of latter day VHS kind of recorders. Uh, the the Video Plus thing. Ah, uh, oh, um, was it like a timer thing where you can. Yeah, it was a tight. Yeah, so you could put a little code in, and each pro each program had a little code. I think uh, on, yeah. on you know you get your Radio Times, the TV listings, and they'd yeah, have a yeah, little yeah. Video Plus code for each program. Right. Um, yeah, no, like your kid, I so like with with the kids, right? Growing up now, yeah. and they just like you know binge watch everything, like whatever program they're into at this particular moment and it's there and then there's just like the idea of, of this program that you really love being on once a week and you have to be there at a certain yeah. time to watch it no, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, go it's through unbelievable this process. Uh, how uh, Vince, uh, Vincent's had Elsa's old iMac in his room for like two years you know and he's never even I just put it in there to get it out of the way you know and thinking when he's ready then he'll be able to learn to use this computer and he's never shown any interest at all in it and then 
uh, when we uh, started this quarantine thing, then the homeschooling thing, it was time to kind of fire it up and I, I want him to learn Photoshop and stuff and he's, he's, he, well, he wants to learn it. And so I, we, we started doing it and um, in, in like the two weeks that he's been using the computer, it's just amazing how effortlessly he just learns all of this like he's just chatting, they've got this kind of online classroom now where the teachers and all of his classmates are all on this kind of forum thing, like a chat, like a giant chat, and they're all just chatting to each other. And they're all basically, you can see them all just starting to learn how to copy paste funny shit that they found elsewhere on the internet. And the whole thing's just turning into this like, like total insane, like creative free for all kind of thing. You know, it's pretty funny. Are you familiar? Passing notes. <laughs> kind of. Yeah. In Are you familiar with Rupert Sheldrake, sort of a maverick biologist? He, um, he he kind of studies this thing called, you know, he has this theory about morphic resonance, which is this sort of universal memory. Yeah. And so, you know, he's done studied anything from like, okay, if a crystal, a certain type of crystal forms somewhere, yeah. it suddenly becomes much easier for that crystal to form in other places. But then he might study, for example, you know, if you if if you do yesterday's crossword today, is it easier because lots of people have done okay. it, and then there's this kind of universal. Me so it's 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 this idea of kind of non-local consciousness. He studies things like, Isn't that like herd you know, immunity? dogs. No, no, non-local consciousness is, is completely different. Completely different to herd immunity. Um, well, I mean, that's when, you know, there's there's certain kind of similar dynamics, possibly, but you know, uh, you know, so for example, dogs and dogs who come to their wi the, the window when their owner's coming back, and he'd do studies like where the owner comes back at random times, c takes completely different routes, and all this kind of thing, and approaches from different angles, and yet the dog sort of still works out what the time to come to the window is and, and just 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 knows intuitively or like he got the nolan sisters <laughs> to um all of them would call one of them um and she would have to say which one of them is calling okay and 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 the result she was she obviously didn't get it right every time but the results were much higher than chance so she she, she got it much more you know it, it, it was much better than random how many times she was right? So and he, you know, this, he's got a book called "The Sense of Being Stared At." So, nice. how do we know that someone's staring at us? And so it's all these kind of well, this is all this, this stuff. is also a great time to be developing those kind of psychic abilities. You know, doing those sort of practices. It's it's it, it, yeah. It's just it just made me think of this. Uh, there's this because I've I've been getting quite into meditation uh, uh, as a result of uh, having two year old twins. Uh, in, mm -hmm. in 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 our, in, our, in our house, that very much very much requ re a requisite of I think uh, yeah. Uh, but um, I've got a friend who's he's I guess he's sort of my unofficial meditation guru. He gives me stuff to practice, and he there's this great story uh, by Roald Dahl called Henry uh, the Wonderful Story of Henry Sugar. Do you know this one? Where, uh, where he, not off the top of my he, head. He he finds a book a little kind of handwritten book by someone who met a guy who could see without using his eyes and then found out that it was just from basically d d training under a yogi in India uh, and the the the, the method the, the training was staring at a candle flame and blah 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 and then three years later you I don't know I'm just kind of paraphrasing but anyway my uh, my uh, meditation guy told me about this um it's called F fire casino i think and it is basically staring at a f candle flame which maybe is where roald dahl got it got it from and then you close your eyes and then you um you can still see the candle flame anyway it's something like that but um vincent is very excited about practicing this with me so we're gonna we, we finally have an opportunity to do some father-son meditation practice with the idea that he might be able to see without his eyes and therefore cheat at cards in a casino when he's bigger, which is what happens in the Roald Dahl story, and he can see through cards. You know. what, 
Well, you can, you can. Uh, uh, there's a guy, David Eagleman, who's a neuroscientist, and they're working on a, a sort of something about non-visual perception, so a, a, a way of kind of interacting with the world that's non-visual, but you you perceive the world through through other senses. You can think of like bats with sonar and all that kind of thing. It's just very hard for us to imagine, but yeah. you know, it's 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 doable, isn't it? Like we just don't know how most of us. Yeah. Yeah, surely um, crossword and dog things would be easy for other people to study and refute. Or have, have there been any other are there independent people looking into those things? Because you know, to replicate the studies, I think I think yeah, I I, I think there's there's lot. He makes lots of people very angry. As I say, he's a, he's a maverick. He's a maverick biologist. Um, but you know, he does. He has interesting you know discussions with people like Terence McKenna, and he's you know he's he's, he's very much on the kind of. The, the fringes of things, but you know, if, if if you have curiosity and an open mind, it's it's they're interesting ideas to to consider. I don't I don't have the kind of the the knowledge to be able to challenge them properly. Yeah, no, I, I like the ideas a lot. I'd just be interested to know what other people have said, sort of, other sort of you know counter explanations people have put forward. He did a TED talk that got removed because <laughs> it made too many people angry. <laughs> He, he he also wrote an interesting book called The Science Delusion in response to Richard Dawkins. Yeah. Uh, and he was just he, he was looking at the kind of ten sacred cows of, of science and, and and how they don't necessarily stand up to scrutiny. So like I think what was the is it the gravitational constant, for example, K, they will have shown that there is there is variation on that constant, so you can't say that it is actually a constant. But it's you know, if you say that to people, it makes them very angry. Um, so uh, it's, it's it's quite an interesting book to read as well. Just if if you like your kind of iconoclastic scientist, would, would that be a, would that be a recommendation you might like to submit for people, anyone watching that, that wants a good book to read? I mean, that's something that I've been trying to do on these podcasts: is get recommendations from people that stuff they're listening to or reading or i mean yeah i heard it a few years ago it's not necessarily it wouldn't be top of my list currently and i wouldn't necessarily want you know that to be you know what i put into the world at this particular moment in time um it's, it's not a pat it's not it's not a strong passion of okay. mine. i mean i, I can I, I can recommend other books you know i've got lots of books i can recommend depending on what the mood is really I'm, I'm definitely kind of becoming more open to that kind of thing. I think mean, 10 years ago, I was a staunch sort of, you know, science going to have the unified theory of everything pretty soon, everything, all this bullshit, you know. But now sort of these things haven't emerged. And um, it's sort of it's, the, the explanations that are put forward by quantum physics are so bizarre that they're, they're almost on a par with a god inventing the world in terms of how ridiculous it sounds. So I'm sort of open to... Uh, the possibility that something um, that fills in the gaps that we don't know yet might be something quite bizarre indeed, but uh, sounds like an interesting starting point anyway. Yeah, I think I, I've been doing, I think after the last election um, and the sort of the Tory landslide and, you know, sort of being dissatisfied with the echo chamber, I was just sort of making a point of just listening to more uh, a, a more diverse range of voices and, and and sources and just saying okay well you know i don't want to be in, in a particular bubble i don't want to be sort of resting in a set of, you know too comfortably in a set of assumptions um and i want to you know if i disagree with someone i want to know why i disagree with them and 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 learn where they're coming from and what they're about and i think obviously you know you it's interesting, isn't it, with science that science move tends to move in that sort of in, in terms of paradigms, where you have a paradigm and people work within that paradigm, and you get these, the strength of the, you know you get the anomalous data, which is dismissed as kind of kooky or, or, or weird or something went wrong, and then once the the amount of data anomalous data snowballs, it, it forces it precipitates a paradigm shift in order to then uh, accommodate that new data. Um, and it's it's an interesting one because you kind of a you want to be sort of you do want to be a bit grounded you don't want to be sort of you know unless you're doing that work but you you know to have that curiosity and that open mind and thinking where things are going I just I'm very reticent to say well this is 
definitely the thing that's going to happen because I just don't feel like I know anywhere near enough to be able to say these things. But for example, mind mind body medicine, that's an interesting field for me. So this book actually is quite interesting. If anyone wants to do a cure, that's all the sort of it's good science writing a journey into science of mind over body. So it's got loads of interesting stuff about the placebo effect mm. and 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 how 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 our thoughts you know create our physical reality and how we can we can affect you know and i think that's that's definitely you know the new frontier of medicine i can say that quite with a fair amount of certainty sounds quite related to alexander technique in terms of sort of the yeah what can change just just by changing your thought process about something how much of an effect you can have on physical things yeah absolutely well that's probably another thing that people who right now are going to be turning to more that now that people are definitely discouraged from going to see the doctor for stuff and it's going to people are going to really have to uh, try and figure out ways to yeah i guess that's going into the being more healthy thing again like diet and all that stuff and yeah well you know else i mean elsa's work on yeah. you know you know the gut health and how that relates to our um you know everything else and how you know we the, that kind of mechanistic model of, of medicine has been incredibly useful but it does need to be challenged yeah. a little bit because it has its it has its clear limitations yeah yeah no it's 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 pretty mind-boggling to think about all the opportunities for for rebuilding or re-emerging this this society relaunching it rebooting it or whatever it's um pretty mind-blowing as i say i think that needs to be balanced with kind of actually just a bit of self-care and well you know this is the challenge this is challenging and it's going to get more challenging and rather than necessarily kind of dwelling on the revolution just making sure we look after ourselves and, and stay healthy stay sane and and you know support the people that need supporting right now and then and then sort of see see how the cookie crumbles pound in the cliche jar uh, how about you uh, al would you like to recommend anything that people check out or anyone that you hear of doing interesting stuff apart from your stuff which i'll link to which is amazing but um uh, crumbs uh, i'm sure there are hundreds of things but on the spot That's i can't okay. think of uh, so, yeah there's a lot well lots of people doing some wonderful music streams online uh, it's pretty easy to find you yeah, to take your pick of on the on twitter cool well yeah, yeah i mean if, if you if you like then send me some links and i'll add them to the uh to the videos um but I feel like maybe we should wrap it up there. We've been going for an hour and a half. It's pretty good. Um, Is it coming to the end? Yeah, but, um, really lovely to speak to you guys, and I really enjoyed this. And um, yeah, um, let's stay in touch. Maybe we should try a signal. Maybe we should try a big signal hangout, like not not streamed live, but just you know. Be fun to get get some groups of old friends together and just hang out and drink a wine. Yeah, I um, yeah. Last week I have a writing group, um, and yeah, we had ten of us. I mean, it was on it was on Zoom, yeah. um, but it was you know we had the gallery view, so you could like you literally have everyone's face on the yeah. screen, and it was ten of us, and it was really great. It actually, worked really well. I was surprised because I thought it was going to be like properly sort of anarchic and everyone just talking over each other and being quite difficult but it works really nicely and it was just lovely to see people like like it's lovely to see you guys today if you could figure out that no latency jamming software get some jams running on the uh, over the old internet yeah, which... no it's yeah, it's great like, it's a good good time to be making making work and i, I just I, I, I like the idea that i like that the the, the the pressure's off you know it's like the pressure's off just make a load of stuff and then see when when all this is when all this is finished and blown over and we're kind of rebuilding our our routines or whatever then you're going to have a whole shitload of sketches and demos and whatever to you know 
feel like. I don't feel the pressure off at all. I feel like, oh, that pianist, he's kind of doing this. He's using this way. He's getting one up on me. Got to, got to catch. I don't know how to do that. Got to get ahead of him. I think that's key, isn't it? Pressure. It's actually, you know, the idea. You know, from you know, I work a lot with anxiety, and you know, the people who are going to be struggling now are the ones who you know, put a lot of pressure on themselves. And actually, if you can just, you know, take that pressure off and just, you know, enjoy. Enjoy and you know, be be present. Not necessarily enjoy, but be present for what it is, and just focus on what you're doing and how you can best use your time under the circumstances. And there's no reason why you can't thrive. It's, it's a weird thing, though. To, to, Apart from if you're, it's, it's a weird thing. Though, to, Does that sound for everyone, or just me? Is it my mind running out of juice? It's an amazing sound. <laughs> I think it's there. <laughs> so amazing it makes me want to take my headphones out. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's kind of like an 8-bit vocal distortion effect. Uh, absolutely suitable for robots, actually. Is that, is that better? If only we could find a musical robot of some sort to use it. Is is that better? That's better, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I can't remember what I was saying now, just waffling. Um, fuck, yeah, I really can't remember what I was saying. But um, I think we were in the, just slowly in the process of wrapping up, to be honest, because yeah. I, I do actually, I've got an appointment at two, and I have got some things I need to do before okay. then, so... Let's wrap it I, up. I do need to love you and leave you well it's been it's been really great and um al if you uh, if you if, if you want to talk later I, I probably don't know more than you about all this stuff the streaming stuff but if i, I can tell you what i know and uh, maybe it'll help if you if you just call me back i'm i'm around not going anywhere yeah, I'm going to experiment with some stuff later today so i'll have a go and then anything anything's not working i might buzz you and say why is this not working? Yeah. And demand an answer. <laughs> oh, but OBS is really cool. That's what I'm using. It's it's pretty pretty neat. But yeah. Um, all right, guys. Well, lots of love to you and um, look after yourselves. And yeah, lots of love to you guys. Love to the families as well. Yeah. All right. See you soon. Oh, and Take thank care. you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hang on and say thank you to everyone for watching. You guys can go if you like. But, uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Um, Alex and Phil are gonna uh, give me some links, which I'll put down below for you to check out. Um, subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already. Uh, that's it. Lots of love. See you soon, guys. Bye. Au revoir. Au revoir.